Hey guys, Donna Wombat here, and today I'm bringing you the third video in my Star Fox 64 Difficult Path playthrough. Firstly, I'd just like to apologise for the long period of time between my last upload and this one. It was right in the middle of my exams, and then I had my birthday and a big party on the weekend, so I've been super busy with other stuff in my life right now. Expect a lot more uploads in the coming weeks. The level that I am playing today is called Aquas, and it is completely underwater planet, and so this level in Star Fox 64 is the only level in which Fox uses the Blue Marine Submarine to complete the mission. It is very easy to stay on the difficult path from this level, as there are no alternative routes, and all you have to do is beat the final bioweapon boss to move on to the next difficult mission. Another handy acquisition for the Blue Marine is that it has unlimited torpedoes, so you can be firing them off base of the entire mission, which in this video you'll see that I am. Now, that is enough about Star Fox for this commentary. The main thing I wanted to talk about in this one is my recent 21st birthday and subsequent party. The last Thursday on the 20th of June was my birthday. I turned 21. It kind of sucked at the time because I was in the middle of exams and I had an exam on my birthday and then another one the next day on Friday. So I couldn't even go out and have a few celebratory beverages, which was a bit gay. It was a pretty chilled out day, a bit of study, a bit of PlayStation, chicken parma for dinner, just a very normal day. It was the weekend and Saturday in particular that I was looking forward to because it seems to be a rite of passage for kids in Australia to have a big old party at home. It was the start of our university holidays as well, so a lot of my mates from uni were pretty keen to get down to my place, as well as a lot of old school friends and family as well. I'm not 100% sure of numbers, but I think there would have been 80 to 100 people there, which is a pretty good turnout considering the party was at a hall near my house, and it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. I headed home on Friday afternoon after my last exam, I had the ute packed full of grog. It was pretty hard to leave because everyone was right in the middle of a big drinking session back at Res, but I reluctantly made the trip home. My sister and her boyfriend who I hadn't seen since Christmas were coming home that night as well, and it was really good to catch up with those guys, and just my family in general, because I don't get to see them much due to the distance between home and uni. Saturday was spent setting up the hall, getting grog organised, and making sure people who were coming knew where to go. We had a heap of grog actually, nearly 30 slabs of beer, 6 slabs of cider, 2 litres of vodka, 6 goon bags for some punch, 12 bottles of champagne, 6 bottles of white wine, and 6 bottles of red wine. The perfect ingredients for a good night out. People started rocking up a little past 7, and pretty quickly there was a decent crowd there. It was pretty cold that night, so most people just chilled around the big old bonfire and sank pins there, while a lot of the adults hung inside. The hall was set up pretty well. Had a big TV set up playing lots of photos of me and people that I know from throughout the years, and a speaker system set up on the stage pumping out the beats. Mum and Dad decided they were going to play this game, which I wasn't too sure about. Everybody got a name tag and a number on arrival, and a little bit into the night they called everyone into the hall. They picked out different groups of people by their numbers, my aunts, my uncles, and my cousins, and then chose another person who didn't know these people to pick out which of the people were actually my aunts, uncles, and cousins. It was kind of confusing and a little bit weird, if you ask me, but I suppose it got people to meet more people, and that's what they were trying to get out of it, so maybe we'll call that one a success. The next part of the night was the speeches. Now, it started off very nicely with both my older sisters making nice speeches, and from there it went downhill pretty quickly. Now, being 21, I've been to a lot of parties and I've been on a lot of nights out, and I'm not going to go into any details, but there are plenty of things I've done that I'm proud of, and then there are plenty of things I've done that I'm not so proud of, that you definitely wouldn't want your family to know about. Well, my family now knows every single one of these things. Um, yeah. I had one of my schoolmates and two of my mates from uni do speeches, and yeah, I got stitched up pretty good. I think my whole family might have a different opinion of me now, and like I said, I'm not going to go into any detail about these things, but to give you an idea of what they said, halfway through the speeches, my ex-girlfriend and two of my aunties stormed out of the hall. So yeah, it was pretty bad and a little bit embarrassing, but I'll cop that in the chin. And uh, if you guys do watch this who made this speech, uh, fuck you guys. They also made up this video for me of people from uni saying why they liked me. But it was in the middle of this big drinking session, so everybody was really, really pissed. And everyone, everything that they said was just bloody hilarious. If I get a few likes on this video, I may even post that for you guys to see. So after the speeches was when the party really kicked off. By now everyone that was coming had arrived, and it basically turned into a big old booze up then, which was great. The parents and older people started to leave, and that led to everybody just getting loose, basically. Now, my memory when I drink is possibly the worst on the earth, and I basically have no memory between about 12 and 4, but the first thing I do remember is walking into the hall and it being like a cloud in there. Somebody had let off a fire extinguisher, and no, it wasn't just like a normal water fire extinguisher, it was one of those freaking dry chemical ones. 
You have never seen one of those go up or been in the area when one goes up. And you're lucky, because it fucking sucks. It's like the hall was full of smoke. The chemicals like a bloody irritant to your lungs, so if you tried to breathe, all you could manage to do was cough. So everybody filed out of the hall, but the fire extinguished episode wasn't done there. Not only did it get let off, but then some dickhead put the fucking thing in the fire. So that's going to be annoying to get replaced. Also that night, a couple of things happened that were pretty crazy. Um, one girl tried to run away, basically. She was upset or something, and basically just got in her car and left and ran away. And there was a big old sort search for her. I mean, she was she was fine. We found her down the road a couple of kilometres, and she hadn't got far, but it was kind of a bit weird. And another poor girl had to go to hospital at like 5 in the morning. An ambulance came out and got her and everything. Thankfully, they were both okay, and it was nothing serious, but yeah, you know you've had a pretty good party when someone runs away and someone is hospitalised. I somehow ended up back in my bed at home sleeping, which was, which was pretty good. Mum woke me up by singing the next morning, however, which was quite the opposite. Everyone piled back to my house the next morning for breakfast. Just the normal stuff, bacon, eggs, toast, sausages, hamburgers. Nothing like a big old greasy breakfast to clear up that hangover. But considering there were a few people who hadn't slept, I'm not quite sure it would have done the trick. People started clearing off and by about 11 everyone had gone. Cleaning up the hall was a fucking nightmare. It was like a bomb had gone off in that place. And I suppose it sort of had with the fire extinguisher. Now bottles and cans and rubbish are easy enough to clean but the chemical that came out of that damn extinguisher was like, I don't know, it was like a very fine dust and it was just fucked cleaning it up. Me and dad tried for a while to sweep it up but it was just a lost cause. Dad ended up getting his garden blower back from down home sucking it all up that way. But after a long, slow afternoon, we got the place clean. All things aside, it was it really was one of the most enjoyable nights that I've had in a long time. Having all your friends and family together in the one place is always a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. This is going to wrap up this commentary. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'd love if you would leave a comment below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. I'm just four subscribers away from 150, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I've been Wombat. Catch you later.